Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 11, lesson 3, Equations of Lines of Fit. After this lesson, you need to be able to find the equation for a line that closely fits the data and use it to predict values that are not present in the original data set. Let's learn. Equations for Lines of Fit. Here we have a scatter plot showing the amount of food collected and the number of volunteers participated. We have already plotted our data points and created our line of best fit. Once our line is drawn, we can create an equation in slope-intercept form, similar to how we did it back in module 4, using the slope and the y-intercept. And we're going to do that off of the line that we drew, not necessarily the data points that are there. So, if we want the equation of the line, first we're going to find our slope or rate of change. We can choose any two points on the line. They do not necessarily have to be the data points. If a data point falls perfectly on the line, cool, use it. If it doesn't, pick ones that go through the corners of our grid to make it easy. So if I'm looking at the graph here, I see there's a point, it looks like it goes through the grid at about 40, 15, and then again, it looks like it goes through the grid corner at about 80, 30. So I'm going to use those two, and then I can do my rise over my run for my slope, or use the slope formula as they show here. So if I figure out my rise, it started at 15 and it ended at 30. That went up 15. My run, it started at 40 and ended at 80. That is 40. So 15 over 40 is my slope. I could reduce that dividing by five to three eighths, or I could just turn it into a decimal. And in fact, most of the slopes you're gonna see in this lesson are going to be decimals. Here it's 0 0.375. If we're interpreting what the slope means, then based on our line, 0 0.375 would mean there are 375 thousandths of a ton for every volunteer. Or in other words, if there was only one volunteer, we would have 0.375 tons of food. Next, we need to figure out the y-intercept. So we can look at our graph. Sometimes we're going to have to estimate where it is. But in this case, it does go through 0, 0. This makes sense because if there are 0 volunteers, then 0 tons of food should be collected. So the line should go through 0, 0. Now I can put everything together, plugging my values into slope-intercept form. I have a final equation of y equals 0 0.375x plus 0. And since the y-intercept is 0, we don't really even need to write that last part. We could have just said y equals 0.375x. Example 1. Equations for lines of fit. This scatter plot shows the amount of time Mia spends practicing the piano and the number of mistakes she makes. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line drawn that approximates the data. Then interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So we can see here that the more time Mia spends practicing, the fewer mistakes she makes. Our line trending downward this is a negative association. What would be the equation in slope-intercept form? So we need to find the slope, and we need to find our y-intercept, and then interpret it like it says. So let's write our equation. Let's find the slope. We can pick any two points on the line. Again, they do not have to be the data points that are there. If I look closely, the line here passes through almost perfectly at 2, 6, and again at 4, 1. So those would probably be the best points to choose to figure out my slope. Now I can figure out, I can do my rise over my run. So it went down five, because it started at six and now it's at one. And how much did it go over? It went two to three to four. So that's actually two spaces. So our slope then would be down five over two, or we could divide that out negative 2.5. Now that we have our slope, let's determine our y-intercept. So we're looking, where does it cross? It appears to cross about 11. We're going to make our best estimate here. So we're saying at 11. Later, when you're doing examples on your own, if you think it crosses at 10.95, go for it. Somewhere close to what you see. So let's just use 11 here. That's where it appears to cross. Now that we have our slope and our y-intercept, let's plug them back in. So our slope was negative 2.5. That goes in front of x and 11 was our y-intercept. So these two things together, my slope-intercept form for the line drawn would be y equals negative 2.5x plus 11. 
Last, let's interpret our slope and our y-intercept. So our slope was about negative 2.5. That's what we determined using our line. This would mean that she's making about two and a half fewer mistakes for each hour she practices. If you're having trouble interpreting what it is, look at the graph, look at the units. Your units are going to tell you what is happening. So it's always the y over the x for your slope. So the number of mistakes over the time practicing. So those would be the two things that your slope needs to be about. She's making the number that it says of the y every one hour she practices more. So every one of the x. For the y-intercept, that's where she starts at. So she's starting at about 11 mistakes, assuming she practices for zero hours. So for your y-intercept interpretations, again, either where they're starting, or if you have zero of your x value, what is going to be the y value? In this case, it's that second one. No hours for x means 11 mistakes for y. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the scatter plot to answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, your equation should be C, Y equals 1.33 X plus 40. So if I'm trying to figure this out, I'm going to look for places maybe that the slope goes through the points. So I see the line looks like it goes through the grid right about there. And if I keep going, it looks like it also goes about there. And then maybe again up here. So there's a couple places. I'm going to just draw rise over run. So the rise, it went from 60 to 80. So it went up 20. My run, it went from 15 over to 30. So that's 15. Rise over run. I can reduce that or just divide it out. I get 1.3 repeating. So not A, not D. And then my y-intercept, it looks like it crosses about 40, which is what they're telling us here. It is at positive 40. So we need to make sure we have that positive plus sign, not the minus in B. For B, what's our interpretation? So in this context, I see my units for slope, test score, and time studying. So how does the test score relate to the time studying? Our test score would increase about 1.3, that's our slope, every one minute more spent studying. Obviously, in this type of context, it might have an end limit. So maybe the teacher only lets them get 100%. Theoretically, if the scores wasn't limited, we could just keep going. If they studied for an hour, maybe they're allowed to get over 100%. Two hours, maybe they're allowed to get way higher, whatever that would come out to be. But for each minute they spend studying, their score should go up about 1.33 points. Finally, the y-intercept, if they have zero x's, so zero times studying, the y-value, their test score, starts at about 40. Let's learn. Make conjectures using equations for lines of fit. Once we've created an equation for our line, we can then use that equation to make conjectures about the data. So here we can see our scatter plot for the number of text messages sent and received by different aged people. They already figured out the equation here of y equals negative 80x plus 4,500 that models this data the best. If I want to be able to predict how many text messages a certain person has, so we can see 55 is not on the graph, we can use this model to predict how many they theoretically should get. We just take our x value, in this case it's 55, substitute it in, and we can calculate out y, which is our total number of text messages. So negative 80 times 55 plus 4,500 would come out to be 100 for our value. So in this case, we could predict that a 55-year-old would have about 100 text messages either sent or received. Again, there may be some limitations to doing this. For example, I don't know many zero-year-olds who are going to be sending 4,500 text messages. I don't know many one-year-olds who are going to be sending 4,420 text messages. If you notice, the data starts at around 
15 years old. So there may be some limitations to age. And eventually, if we go much past 55, we're going to end up with a negative number of text messages, which doesn't make sense either. So be careful when you are doing certain conjectures. Some of these lines have limitations to what they actually would mean in context. But in this case, we could say that it's reasonable to predict a 55-year-old would send or receive about 100 text messages per month based on the line and data points we were given. Example 2. Make conjectures using equations for lines of fit. The scatter plot here shows the amount of money a company spends on advertising and the amount of money they make in sales over several months. So the more they're spending on advertising, the higher their sales goes. So let's write an equation for our line drawn, and then we're going to predict if they spend $60,000, so that's over here, how much would they make in their total? Where would that end up crossing? So just as we've been doing, let's find the slope. Here we have 5, 250, and 50, 500. Those look like they're pretty close on the line. I don't see any others that work quite so nicely. Let's subtract. So from 250 to 500, that increased by 250. From 5 to 50, that increased by 45. If I divide that out, I get about 5.56. So my slope here is about 5.56. Next, let's look for our y-intercept. So here, it does not go nicely through, but it is maybe about halfway between 200 and 250. So let's estimate that it's about 225. Plugging those values in, y equals 5.56x plus 225. So that would be our equation for our line of fit. Thinking about our interpretations real quick, 5.56 would mean that every extra thousand dollars that they spend, their sales is going to go up by about 5.56 thousand dollars. For your y-intercept, it's starting at 225 thousand dollars. So if they do not spend any money on advertising, they're still going to be expected to make 225 thousand dollars. Make sure you're paying attention to what's in the parentheses here. We are talking about thousands. If we were to write out an actual answer, we'd need to make sure we're picking an answer with thousands. Next, let's predict if they make $60,000 spent on advertising. So again, 60 would have been over here. How much is it going to be all the way up here somewhere? Let's plug in 60 for our x value. Remember, our units on the previous graph, we're talking about thousands. So this is already, I just want 60, 60 thousands. Plugging in 60, multiplying it by 5.56, then adding 225, I get 558.6. So we could predict that if they spend $60,000 on advertising, that will make the company about $558,600. I just took this number and made it into thousands. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the scatter plot to answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, in A, it is negative 4.3x plus 44. To pick this, I'm going to use some process of elimination before I do anything. I can see that my y-intercept up here is around 45, and it is positive 45. So positive 44, positive 44, it can't be B, it can't be D right away. I see my slope is going down, there's a negative association. So I would then next check, making sure that these slopes are negative, they both are, that didn't help us. So let's pick some points to figure this out. I see right there, it looks like it goes through the corner. I'm going to follow along and see if I can find any other place, maybe right about there. We went down 15 from 40 to 25, over one, two, three and a half. So down 15, over three and a half. Make sure you're paying attention to how long each segment is. If I divide that, 15 divided by three would be five, but it's a little bit more than that. So A would be your best choice. 
if we're predicting five and a half tons, so the next line over, calculating that out, y equals negative 4.3, I want to know 5.5, and then I have to add 44. So 4.3 times 5.5, I'm going to use a calculator for this, I get negative 23.65. I still need to add 44. When I do that, 23.65 plus 44, I get 20.35. Be real careful. Here's another way you can check and make sure things are correct. Would it make sense if you just had this part because you forgot to add the 44 at the end? Would it make sense to have negative gas mileage just because the car weighed five tons? Probably not. It might be getting less gas mileage, but it's not gonna end up being negative. The gas is going to get them somewhere in the car. They should be able to move, even if it's less than a mile.